Good morning, welcome to day 111 of my Munro challenge. Today I'm walking route number 125, the Unoks. Um, so there's Unok Big and Unok Moor. Uh, they're in, in the top 10 uh, highest mountains in Scotland. So I'm back at the Revis, Nevis range, uh, quite looking forward to uh, looking at another, another ski resort. See how this one compares. Not a good start to the day really. Um, the three tracks that are, are obvious, or the obvious ways up the mountain, are all saying no walking. There we go. Another one, no walking. So after much ado, it turns out all the footpaths have been turned into mountain bike trails and I'm not allowed on them. And uh, basically I've got to start my walk from the top of the mountain bike trail. So here I am top of the mountain bike trail. Uh, there's a various ski pools ahead. We're heading up there. So uh, to start with we're following this uh, this line of fence posts on this uh, piste I, I expect. Uh, various uh, ski lifts around, chair lifts and lifts. I have to say that uh, that was unexpected that uh, saved me about an hour I would imagine a viewpoint over there it's a lot grassier than the uh, Glencoe ski slopes I remember them being really bouldery it surprised me how rocky they were uh, when we came off of Cretia. Uh, in fact, Aviemore as well, I seem to remember, was extremely rocky. So uh, this is quite grassy in comparison. Quite a steep pull up. I have to say, it's very steep. <laughs> oh, but it's quite fun to ski down. You don't realise they're as steep as this when you're on skis. Let's have a look around. Wow, fabulous views. Well, I thought it was steep. <laughs> uh, I think that might be the top end of a black run. That's why it was so steep. So, we're still heading up, uh, heading up uh, towards that mast up there. Wow, got a bit of a view. So, we're going to follow this. Uh, line towards the top absolutely dreadful day here we're at the top but look more nothing to see so we're following this track straight over the other side drop down to the Belak straight up the other side so the path started uh, rising again This side's different again, it's very rocky, quite a steep uh, climb, quite definite. The other side was nondescript really, it was, uh, I say, difficult to find the top. Yeah, definitely a steeper, rockier side to the Belak. I don't think I'm too far away from the summit here. Here we are, Unuk Big. Well, at least it stopped raining, if nothing else. That's definitely the steeper one of the two. And it's the higher one of the two. So we'll retrace our steps back down to the Belak. Over the first one, and back down to the ski station. So we're back in the Belak. We're just starting the ascent of the other side, which from memory was much grassier and uh, much more gradual. So here we are, back at Unuk Moor. I have to say, that was easier to find coming that way than it was from over there. Although I can see a faint path heading in the direction I need to be. So I'm going to take that. 
Yeah, I'm back on this featureless top. Very difficult navigation in this weather. Now, because I'm coming this way, I did pick up a faint path, which brought me quite a long way across this top, but it's now disappeared. Yes, I remember this, uh, this edge here. So we're, we're on track, <laughs> still, uh, still heading in the right direction. We're back at the top of the, uh, the ski pools, the button lift there. I'm heading there, and I'm heading this way down towards the uh, other button lift set, and eventually the fence line. We're in danger of getting a view here. Clouds are just trying to lift at this uh, cliff line. I'm going to be hanging a left very shortly. I do remember uh, bits and pieces of this uh, these uh, paraphernalia from the uh, ski resort. There we go. There's a lift over there. I think it's the top of the one where I'll descend. Can't quite make out how steep this is. <laughs> it's very steep. I, th I think this is a, a black run, so uh, I would imagine it needs to be steep, doesn't it? So I've just dropped out of the rain and the cloud again. Oh. Uh, I'm going to continue down to them that fence line and then hang a right towards the uh, ski station. Welcome to day 111 of my Munro challenge, route number 125. It's Sunday the 3rd of July and I parked at the Nevis Range ski station, £4.50 for the day. Oh, what a day. So, um, let, let's start off. I, I, I initially plotted a route on a, a, on a track which um, followed pretty much the underline of the gondolas. Uh, it was a footpath. Now, I've since found out uh, when I got back and had a coffee and spoke to various people in the in the centre that this um, footpath had been turned into a mountain bike track for the World Cup. So it's now the World Cup mountain bike track. And I'm not sure when this happened, um, but I'd not realised on the map. Anyway, for safety reasons, there's no walking now up from the ski centre and everybody's um, compelled to take the gondola. So I, I fought with myself as, as I was walking up the hill, long and hard, worrying, thinking, right, I'm going to rewalk this tomorrow. Um, I'm not, not happy about this. Uh, anyway, uh, I, I've since had a look at the guidebook, and the guidebook actually gives this as an alternative route, um, which put my mind at rest. And I've also realised that I think Aviemore starts at a higher point and Glen Shee starts at a similar point. So I guess it's no real difference to driving up to either Aviemore or Glen Shee. So, so I'm a little bit more at ease, uh, let's say. Um, although I'm very, very fed up. Um, anyway, um, so one, once you're at the, uh, the uh, I think it's called the Goose Cafe, um, you follow the pieces up the, uh, up the uh, slopes uh, to the various either um, seat lift or chair lift or um, button lifts. Uh, very steep in places. Uh, I think the there's, you start off following a blue run, which eventually becomes a black run. Um, so it is steep, uh, and it's quite difficult underfoot. Even though it's grassy, uh, it's not easy footing. Um, now I was in. I was in thick cloud, rain, wind, it, it wasn't particularly nice and it was extremely difficult navigation. Now I could see the steep cliffs on the edge so it was also quite I'd, quite important that I kept to my nav. And I really struggled on the top I have to say to find the top at first until I came across um, a path, a faint path which took me to the, uh, the summit cairn. A uh, very wide featureless top I have to say. Um, so from the summit cairn there is a definite path which takes you down a grassy slope which uh, ever so gradually becomes steeper and steeper towards the bottom of the BLAC. 
and then you start the ascent of the other side which is very very different it's very rocky um, it's quite steep and uh, totally totally different totally different mount, mountain um, yeah it's a uh, it's a uh, the, the path weaves in between the rocks and and whatnot it's nothing no, there's no scrambling it's not that steep it's just it's just a shock to the system i suppose and i think because there's no visibility um you know you're coming across stuff as you get to it so you you know it's came as a bit of a surprise let's say to the top of uh on a big well um that's actually the steeper the, the steeper one and the higher one of the two even though uh, I think one up more sounds like it should be the higher, but it's not. Anyway, you retrace your steps, you drop back to the B lac, and pretty much all the way back to the bottom. So it is quite a short day, um, six and a half miles, but there's still 2,821 feet of ascent. So still a lot of climbing, and a lot of that was steep. Um, and the walk took me four hours. <laughs> 